Welcome to the Art of Decluttering podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Amy Ravel from Simply Organised. And I'm Kirsty Frugia from Feels Like Home. We can't wait to share with you all our tips and tricks to help you declutter and keep your home and family organised. To hang out with us more, check out the Art of Decluttering on Facebook and Instagram. And we'd love you to check out our website, outofdecluttering.com.au and see all that's happening over there. Let's Let's get get started. started. Do you know, Kirst, there's one thing in life that I wish I did more of because it seems romantic, but I do not that much of. Picnicking? Yeah. (laughs) I love the concept of picnicking and I would picnic more if it involved somewhere comfortable to sit and somebody else cooking the food. And somebody else preparing the food for you. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Don't you think that, that maybe that's a new business idea? As we, as probably someone's done it, where you like can just go somewhere, pick up your picnic basket and yeah. a rug and some cushions, take your picnic. Uh, my friend Katie took her husband Glenn on a surprise fortieth birthday to New Zealand, yeah. and they got like a helicopter up to the top of like the mountains around Queenstown and had this romantic picnic. And that's I was so all cool. like, Ugh. and it was all pre-prepared. Like I'm sure she didn't do it. Not no, because well, why would of you? her, but yeah. because I think it was part of a package yeah, deal. Yeah. And I was like, that is my type of picnic. Yeah, somebody else does all the Champagne <laughs> and preparing it all. Yeah. I've got, here's a secret of mine. I have Tupperware that's specifically for picnics. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Twinning. <laughs> and yet we don't go on picnics very much. No, but our picnics and our camping stuff is one and the same Mm -hmm. so we've just got a carry container that's got plates bowls cups serviettes a tablecloth cutlery salt and pepper like it's just a really basic picnic set but it is also what we take camping so it's one and the same for us great is yours or do you have two sets of tupperware uh we don't have because when simon when we go camping we take okay. a lot of stuff when from our house. we go camping? I used to go camping before okay. children. Yeah. If I'm ever invited, I don't get invited anymore. <laughs> and I, and it's fine because that means it's Outlander weekend. <laughs> exactly. But I want to go camping. I would love to be that family that go away every other weekend camping in a camper van. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> I want to go glamping is what you mean. No, I'm, Yeah. But we're really not talking about camping. No, we're talking we're about talking picnicking. Picnic. Anyway, is there a glick micking where it's like glamping but picnic style? Oh, what could we what could we name that? Mm. Let's look on Instagram to see if anybody else has done that. Yeah, that's a cool. Got a hashtag for it. I like it, but I think that's kind of what we're saying we want, isn't it? Yes. I mean, I'm at the age, you know, the ripe old age of thirty eight, where when we go picnicking, I take cushions. Because it's sometimes too hard to sit on the ground. And when we go with my parents, I always take cushions for them. That's and they it. love me forever. They don't care if I feed them crap food. As long as I've got their cushion, they're happy. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't do it often enough. Do you know what I think has shifted? Is we used to be a picnicking culture because the thought of going out to a cafe for lunch was exorbitant. exorbitant. There was no way that you could afford to pay. You know, we we went out for lunch today, right? Cost us $60 just for my husband, myself, and our two kids. Like that was a $60 meal. But if it was a picnic, it might have cost us 15 or $16. Like we would have made sandwiches and cut up fruit and it would have been much simpler and quicker. But we're time poor and we're yes, money rich. I was going to say we're an instant gratification yeah. society now. Correct. So we've moved from picnics to cafes. Yes. There you go. That's my my insight into our culture is we're not a picnicking culture because we're a cafe culture. Mm. Maybe agree? it's just the middle class. Well, we're very middle class. That we got aren't we? that's happening on. We're massively middle class, you and I. Yes. We're about as middle class as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not something I wear proudly necessarily. But anyway. So do you have a picnic rug? Yes, and it lives in my boot of the oh, car. Good. So you're prepared for picnicking? I am always prepared. You just don't do it that often. Yes. I think the mo- the times we do it the most is or that we use the picnic rug the most is in school holidays. Like when we're catching up with friends for a play date, we'll go to a park and then at least I'm not sitting on ant yes. holes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting bitten on the ball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we don't keep ours in the car, but it's near the front door. In a... It's because you don't have room in the car. No, it's full of Ikea stuff. 
My clients would much prefer I had a car of IKEA stock than my picnic blanket, which gets used maybe three times a year. <laughs> um, so yes, ours is easy to grab. And if we chose to go for a picnic now, this is how we would picnic. We would get the picnic blanket. We would get our picnic box. And we would go to Coles. We get some rolls. We get a chicken. We get some pre-made salad or some spinach. And we'd buy some fruit and maybe some sweets. And we would go to a picnic that way. So we recently had a picnic with some friends, like a 20-year reunion. And it was a picnic, but none of us sat on the ground. And we all had our picnic stuff, but we'd all gone to Coles to buy all the food. No one had made sandwiches. <laughs> I think that's how it probably tends to be across the board. Or do you think there's still a lot of sandwich-making picnickers out there? I think it depends on the purpose of the picnic and what you're doing. Hmm. And why are you doing it? Hmm. And who are you catching up with? And the That's age of, of your variables. children and how picnic-minded you are. <laughs> it's very important how picnic-minded you are. <laughs> That's a key. You should put that in your resume. Picnic-minded, <laughs> zero to ten scale, very, very effective in judging meant, your future performance I in meant, picnicking. I meant, like, if you enjoy the art of picnicking. <laughs> If you enjoy creating all the dishes that go with picnicking, like taking all, like we have to take butter with us. No, you just go to Coles. But then you're buying a whole new butter tub of butter that goes all melted, and then you have to chuck it out because it's all gone yuck. So today's episode (laughs) was requested by Geraldine Van Oort, and we hope Geraldine that we'll answer. Clearly, we are not. Picnickers. Picnic. What's the word? Like, picnickers. Picnickers. We're not the picnickers. Art, this is not the art of picnicking. No, but we're going to give you some ideas. So we've both said that we've got picnic blankets that we can grab easily. We've got picnic sets that we can grab easily that can also be used if you're going to a barbecue and you need to BYO stuff or going to a party and you need that. Like you can just pick it up and go. And I think that's helpful. What's not helpful is to have a picnic basket that's so heavy you don't want to carry it. Um, which is what we used to have, the old cane ones. Mm -hmm. And we had one and it was so heavy that every single time we had to go out, Cal had to carry it. I could not carry the thing. And that's because it had like proper glasses in it and like a thermos that was really heavy and it had like leather straps. Did you get it for your wedding? Of course I got it for my wedding. I know. I knew as soon as you started talking about that, I was like, that was a wedding present. In the early 2000s. In the early 2000s when picnicking was still a thing. Yeah, and we were all poor. So that was like... That was perfect. Was picnic. It was perfect. We used yeah. it a lot. We don't use it anymore. We got rid of it and got um, a, just a box that we carry, <laughs> and it's so much easier. Do you take it esky with you? No. Do you know when I bought Oliver, other male in my house, Simon, Simon for Christmas, I bought Simon a drink dispenser thermos oh, thing. Oh, they're cool. We went to the beach a couple of weeks before Christmas and he went oh it would be good if we had bought like a bigger container of drinks so that yeah. we could have like you know cold drinks cold drinks and I went into Kmart and I could only find a 1.5 liter and then the other day I was in there and there was a five liter one and I was like that's the size I really wanted but carrying like that's obviously five kilos maybe five and a bit given the container would you not be better just taking like five big bottles of water oh we we do but but when you're at the beach, it's usually hot and you consume more than 600 litres of water. 600, 600 litres? 600 millilitres of water. So the Ferrugias are drinking the ocean. Yes. Global warming, pretty much your fault. <laughs> Basically. Because every time they go to the beach, they're drinking 6,000 6, litres. 600. 600,000 6, litres. No. Yeah. <laughs> so I did buy him one of those. That's cool. So that's expenses. an extra kind of picnic-y thing that you could take. Yeah. To the Excellent pe- to the beach, well, which is when we actually, use that's the most. Awesome, yes, that's when we use our picnic stuff. The yes, most. me too. The beach, that's awesome. That just made sense, and that's what I had said. Do you go on picnics often, or is it just during summer when the weather is a perfect twenty-seven degrees? <laughs> yeah, that's in fact for me a picnic's perfect at about twenty-three. Twenty-seven is too hot for me to be picnicking, <laughs> but like twenty-three, clear. Are you going through menopause? <laughs> It could be. <laughs> and so I can't believe you just brought up menopause, like right in the middle of picnicking. <laughs> now 
I feel like I need to address <laughs> what's left hanging is this menopause question. Well, you, no, you no, clearly I'm not. I'm just stirring. Everybody I knows know. I'm stirring you. I know, but I'm so hot all the time. I often think, Ooh, maybe could you I be are. going through menopause? Early onset. No, I spoke to my doctor. He doesn't think so. <laughs> so if there's any other questions you guys have. <laughs> okay. Enough TMI. Of, enough about it. It is a bit TMI. Sorry about that. One of our tips is that if you do have picnic stuff that's specifically for picnic, that you're not kind of packing up stuff from in the kitchen, is to keep it together and keep it where you know where it is. There's no point having your picnic blanket in one room and a bit of the picnic set in another and like maybe folding chairs in another. It is so much easier if you have it all together so that you can grab and go when you're like, oh, let's have a picnic. Let's get sushi and go out for a picnic. Mm. Perfect. Love it. Does it need to be plastic or can you just take your good stuff? That's another thing. Like you don't have to have a picnic set. No. You could just take your good stuff. And so what if you leave a knife behind? Just go and use your – get another knife out of your good cutlery, good, good cutlery set that you got for your wedding that you haven't no. used. No, I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with you on this. <laughs> Because I think the beauty of a picnic is when you're done, you chuck all the dirty stuff in like a plastic bag and chuck it back in the picnic thing. That totally would not work if it was your good stuff because it would smash. I think plastic is best when you're outside. Uh, It's so much more durable. Are you meaning like... Plastic, not plastic knives and forks. Oh, no, no, no. I don't mean plastic picnic stuff. Yes, I don't mean disposable. Yes. I'm anti disposable as much as possible. So, we have what we bought probably eight, nine years ago is a $2 set of cutlery from Kmart. And that's been our picnic and camping cutlery for however long I just said, eight years or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, they're not disposable. We don't use them and throw out because I just think if you can avoid doing that, Good, because I was going to talk about that. Yeah, okay, go. No, no, no. We don't need to talk about it now. It's the saying I do want to address yes. the issue of disposable. Yeah. But my point of all that was you don't have to, if you're getting comparatonitis and wishing you had a picnic set, you don't need a picnic set. You can take your stuff yeah. from home. You can take your knives and forks and your plates. Just take lots of tea towels to wrap them all up in and then they won't get broken. Are you loving getting into decluttering and organising? Are you excited to get into different spaces in your house and just see the transformation that is possible? But are you also finding that there are some things that just aren't sticking, that you're finding that you just don't have the routine or system to really hold you where you want to be? Well, Kirstie and I have developed the Art of Decluttering online course, which is an amazing six-module self-paced course with an interactive Facebook community. So if you want to go from overwhelmed to just nailing this decluttering thing, we would love you to join us. You just visit outofdecluttering.com.au forward slash course. We have payment plans available. Access it today and see that transformation that you've been dreaming of. Have an organized home that stays organized for life. We cannot wait to see you in the course. Do you know what we have in our pic? Well, what we had in our picnic set until our most recent camping trip is the leftover plates and serviettes and cups from party supplies. <laughs> and so, ironically, it's Fairy Princess because not that my boys had a Fairy Princess party, though go for it. It was because I owned a party supply business. Yeah. And so once things were open for photo shoots, I didn't want to just chuck them out. So we'd put them in the picnic box yeah. and little girls would go bananas because we'd go picnicking and we'd all pull out like our Tupperware and I'd have like three random Disney princess and they could use them. And oh my gosh, like I was so famous amongst the little girls for having, I'm not sure famous is the word, um, but it was great because Notorious. if you have leftover party supplies, rather than just chucking them out, which I think a lot of people do, just throw them in your picnic set. It depends on how much, because this is another thing that I, we don't want to just downgrade everything to the picnic set. It's like the gardening clothes. When often with our clients, they love a particular outfit and they recognize that it no longer suits them or it's torn or something and they downgrade it to gardening clothes yeah or painting clothes or painting clothes but how many of them do you need and so this is my caveat to that suggestion it's a great suggestion but sometimes things just need to go because sometimes you have 20 years worth of 
serviettes. Yeah, you don't need that much. And you go picnicking once a year. It is going to take, like, seriously, Amy, what did you just say? How long ago did you sell your party in the box (laughs) business? Five years ago. And I've still got serviettes in our picnic box from that business. Yes. There's still probably 15 or 20. Or 30? Nah. Yes. 17. (laughs) And so it served you well, but would you have recommended that to your clients? I don't know. I mean, our picnics. So I think what happens is picnic sets end up so full that you have a heap of stuff that you don't need. Like, do you need a cheese knife in your picnic set? Maybe if that's if what you're you a cheese have lover. a lot of cheese. Yeah. But maybe you don't. And do you need champagne glasses or can you just have all like plastic cups? Yeah. Do you need to have particular, like it doesn't need to be big. So if your picnic set is heavy and overflowing and has multiples and duplicates, or if you have multiple picnic sets, which is often the case, Mm -hmm. so many clients that are our age cursed or that got married at the ages that we did in the 2000s have cane picnic baskets. But then, And then backpack ones. Yeah, correct. And then esky ones. Yeah, you don't need that many. Just have one and it makes it so much easier. Yes. I do have an esky that we use on occasion, but not generally when we go picnicking. Do you use it for camping? Yeah, we use it for camping or if we're taking like ice and drink somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's because this is what I had thought. Like, do you squirrel away things in the hope that you'll one day use it on a picnic? Mm-hmm. And you just said yes to that for your own self. I did. Because you were squirreling away all those party in the box serviettes. Yep. And that's where it becomes tricky for our clients and for us, clearly, is when we see the use for it and so we don't want to chuck it out. Yeah. And so if it's contained and it's a small amount, then that's good. But if you, Amy, if I was advising you as a professional organiser five years ago and you had 300 serviettes still, yes, I would have gone, is it the best use? Do you have the space and is that reasonable? Do, how often do you go on picnics? Yeah, could you keep 100 of them <laughs> Yes, or 50 of them and that would be totally fine? Yes. And could you give them to your sister who does have daughters? Yeah. Do you, yes. There's so many different ways around letting go of stuff instead of just downgrading it to the picnic yes. or keeping it for that one day that you might go on a picnic and you actually never do go on picnics. Or you keep a bottle opener in there but only ever buy wine that's got a screw top. Yeah. Like you don't need to keep a bottle opener in there if that's not what you do. If you buy a picnic set and it has salt and pepper shakers in there and you do not use salt and pepper on a picnic, Get rid of the salt and pepper shakers. You don't need to keep them. Just because there's like a little elastic holder for them, there's not, and even though no. they look really cute in there, you don't need to keep them. Get rid of them. Clear it out. Clear the clutter. Keep only what you need. Right. So keep less often stuff together. This is how back onto the organizing. So if you use it less, I recommend or we recommend keeping it together. Mm-hmm. And then if, and but still have it fairly easily accessible. Picnic stuff's really great in a garage. Yes. Because you can see it. But what you can also keep with it are maybe your deck chairs. You might keep your frisbee, as we said, an esky. You might keep bocce balls. You might keep out backyard cricket stuff so that if you do decide to go, it's not an ordeal because mm. I think that's what puts people off. It seems like so much work. But if you get in your head, actually picnicking is really easy All we have to do is just grab everything on that shelf, nick over to the sushi shop or go to Baker's Delight and get ham and what are they called? Cheesy Vegemite thingies. Cheese Mike Scrolls. That's them. That's actually relatively easy. And if everyone brings a drink bottle, what else do you need? Do you need to go and buy a couple of apples? (laughs) Like if you want to be a picnicking kind of family and it's such an inclusive way of sharing a meal – Go, go, make it easy for yourself. Keep it all in the garage in one spot. Keep it in the spare room in one spot. Like make sure that you can grab it and go. I'm actually inspired to picnic. I know. I was just about to say, you look like you're about to go, let's go for a picnic I tonight. Know, I am. <laughs> I'm seriously thinking, could we take the kids out for a picnic tonight? Yeah, you probably could. We've already defrosted the chicken for dinner, but maybe I'll think about it. We'll just get cow to fry it up before we get home. Oh, and take it out. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're going to think about this more. <laughs> Um, Well, my sister and brother-in-law had a picnic for their wedding. 
That's right. They that just invited awesome. everybody they'd ever met. We've spoken about this on the wedding episode, but they just invited everybody they ever met because it was a picnic base So, and it was BYO picnic. So you could go up to Red Rooster and get your Red Rooster or you could, you know, make an elaborate picnic and bring it because it was all BYO. So that I do like picnic in that picnicking from that sense is that it is um, it can be as expensive or as cheap as you want. You can buy some moe and some brie and camembert and have a really you know really expensive picnic, or you can pick up pizzas, pizzas, or you can get the bread that you've got in the fridge and slap a piece of cheese and Vegemite on them and take them out. Yeah, we had a picnic. Mm, 10 days ago, no, not even, seven days ago with friends of ours up in Queensland because the Coolum community put, or the Coolum Council or whatever in Queensland, put on a flick in the park mm. and we went and saw Peter Rabbit and we just got picnic blankets, the adults sat in deck chairs. We even bought a beanbag for the kids, bought, I think, five pizzas between 10 of us. That was it. So easy. Perfect. So easy. So we want to encourage you too that things like picnicking – are what you can do when you're decluttered and minimal and not running around like a crazy chicken with its head cut off. Mm. If your schedule is so busy that you don't even have time to picnic, maybe it's time to look at your schedule. Maybe it's time to see what the minimalist lifestyle can offer and what it can bring. So we're going to read out an iTunes review in a minute after Kirsty shares something else because I'm getting the shake. What do you want to talk about, my friend? Disposables. Oh, you want to go back to disposables. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's be considering our environment to not have disposable utensils and cups. You can get some awesome bamboo disposable utensils. Mm, That's still disposable. Yeah, so plastic disposable. Right. Don't break down. Don't, yeah. So, uh, like, I'm all for ease. Yep. And, you know, we don't necessarily so the joy of picnicking is to be able to chuck everything in the bin at the end <laughs> yes. and not have to go home and clean up yeah otherwise you may as well just stay home because it's quicker to clean up <laughs> so one so i would like to put it out there that there is lots of bamboo disposable which is it's quicker and easier to grow and it's sustainable and better for the environment and it breaks down quicker i assume yeah, yeah. yeah. I love bamboo anything. Because it's anything. plant-based. Yeah. Bamboo sheets, bamboo clothes. Bamboo pillows. Love them. Love them. Love them. <laughs> may I read the iTunes review? You now? may now. Excellent. It's from Dinosad on iTunes. I heard about Kirstie and Amy from a friend two days ago, and I have not stopped listening since then. I so appreciate their gracious and judgment-free approach as I slowly clear out years of junk that has weighed me down. Thank you so much, Amy and Kirsty. Thank you so much, a dino sad. I love it when friends recommend it. We said it the other day that when you recommend a podcast to a friend, they're so much more likely to jump on and listen and give it a go than if they hear it spruiked on an ad or something like that. So you guys sharing our podcast with the world is the way that um, we can reach people and that we can continue to grow our influence. So thank you. And it's just so awesome that people would listen to us. Like we're sitting in the studio on January 9 and we realized today that we had just clicked over 600,000 downloads. That just blows my mind that people have listened to us 600,000 times. Yeah. And by the time this is out, yeah. we're probably going to be at 850, 900,000, maybe a million. Oh my gosh. When we get to a million curse, we're going to do the biggest party. Okay. Can't wait. I wish I had just so many ideas. Okay, I can't wait to hear that. In fact, can you let us know, listeners, what you would like us to do for our one million party? Not many podcasts in Australia get to a million downloads. Not very many at all. Like Teacher's Pet, sure. Out of decluttering, we're getting there. So when we get to a million, we would love to know what you think we should do to party. Online, virtually, or in person. Yeah, we I'm so excited. But it's just so beautiful that people I, – I, I'm, like, just really, like, gobsmacked that people keep tuning into us each and every week. And, and it's awesome that 
people find value and are transforming their homes and their hearts and their heads because of what they listen to. Like just two everyday chicks just doing their thing. Two Aussie gals doing their thing. In fact, I'm going to read out... I just got a text message from our client yesterday that, so Kirsty's in Melbourne for the recording and to visit family. And I had a job come up that had opportunity for us to work together. So it's been super fun. We've never done that before, working on a client together. And I just got a text message from that gorgeous client. So we, I, you guys might um, have heard us talk about them. They've got five gorgeous kids from one to 10 years old. And I got a text message from the mum this morning. It says, you guys have worked a miracle. I'm not going to say their daughter's name, so we'll call her Sarah. Now Sarah is actually saying, chuck that to all kinds of small things. She has never said that before. And we can attest to that because Sarah, not her real name, we were working with her just yesterday. It was like wanting to keep everything and we're teaching her the habits and the mindset changes and teaching her. And she said, Oh, I thought decluttering was going to be boring and horrible, but it's actually really fun. And to get a text message from her mum the following day to say, oh, my gosh, my child is transformed, there's not a whole lot better than that. Hopefully we get to see her tomorrow as well. I can't wait to give her a huge high five. I just think this is like so it makes me almost teary just thinking about the fact that this little girl has gone from – loving everything that she's ever created and wanting to keep everything that anyone has ever given her to being able to let things go and having a new perspective on Mm. things it's so cool and she's eight sarah (laughs) not her real name you're amazing yep we think you're cool we think you're awesome and (laughs) as parents having us come and work with your kids is an incredible investment not all of you can afford to do that or would choose to do that but when you do you reap the rewards Mm. So we hope that you have a picnic this week. Yeah, we hope you're inspired like we are to go out and enjoy the beautiful weather, whether that be icy cold snow in the US or sunny balmy in Australia or anywhere else that you might be in the world. See if you can do a picnic this week and be inspired. Awesome. Have an amazing week. Another area of your home is decluttered this week and we'll see you again next week. Woohoo. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learned something awesome today, we'd love you to leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook so others can find our podcast too. Don't forget you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, artofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com slash decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom. 